just plunge myself into the hard world and just take as whatever opportunity that comes to me. And it's been just fascinating and I'm loving every moment of it. Hi, Rosanna, how are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you for having me, Victoria. It's so lovely to connect with Harvest, local to my area in Vancouver, because I don't know a lot of them. So it's very exciting to have you here. And before we begin, introduce yourself. Tell us about your music journey and how did the harp come into the picture? So my name is Rosanna. Um, I have been playing harp for 15 years. Not, not a long time, considering a lot of how harp professional uh, have become professional. So my journey is a little bit different than, than other, other harpists. I, I was from Hong Kong. I was born in Hong Kong. And like a lot of Asian parents, they sent me to piano lesson. Same here. <laughs> so that's how I, I start getting exposure to music and theory, which is absolute best foundation I, I, I could ever ask for. And then as I, I, I grow up, I was introduced to other instruments. And I started uh, guzheng, mm. which is also a pluck instrument, but you use your, your, your nails. And it's kind of like a harp, but it is on, flat on a table. Yeah, and some people describe it as a Chinese harp in some ways. Mm. Yes, it's also plucking, but it's quite different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite different. The, the guzheng, you can bend notes. Um, and the harp, the double action harp or the Celtic harp, the lever harp, you, it is more with the Western music. So with the tone, with the same, same tone. So you, you would change the pedal to change the pitch by half a pitch. So um, I had exposure to guzheng and I really like how I mix sound by contacting the strings. And I feel that's something quite different from piano because the piano is also string, but it's by a, a drum hitting it on the other uh, in, inside, like a more percussion. Uh, so, so that was uh, how I started when I was young. And then the family moved to uh, Canada. And then uh, like uh, also a lot of Asian, I, I had my university uh, studying computer science. So that's actually what I, I'm, I'm trained for uh, professionally first. Uh, and then slowly I want to kind of expand out my, my uh, passion and my hobbies and then harps come, come, come back to me. So I started studying with another harpist, Alice Howe, who, moved, who now moved to Cape Breton. And she introduced me to Celtic music and how to just make, make music and not follow the sheet music. So that was, uh, that was a very great experience uh, I, I learned from her. Uh, and then I met Elizabeth who has been my, my longtime teacher and my, my, my coach for, for a long time. Even now, I, when I get an orchestra gig and when, I, when I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I go to Elizabeth. She's the right person to contact. She is the one. Uh, and she always say, oh, it's okay. You can do it. Yeah, so Elizabeth is a wonderful mentor. And then at some point after I learned harp for about uh, eight, eight years or so, I'm, I'm looking for, for, for ways to expand. And Elizabeth suggested me to study under Ina Zolovecci. And that, takes, uh, that took me to uh, Boston, Massachusetts in the States. So I spent uh, a couple of years there studying with Ina uh, at the New England Conservatory. And then I come back and I just plunge myself into the hard world and just take as whatever opportunity that com comes to me. And it's been just fascinating and I'm loving every moment of it. So that's how I, I started my hard life. That's awesome. And yeah. we chat with Elizabeth not too long ago and yes. she talk about how, and back in the days when she was just getting into playing the harp, there was not a lot of harpists around. And mm. then now the harp 
well, had grown quite a bit. There's more harpists around. What has your experience been like being a younger generation of harpists compared to, say, what Elizabeth had been through? Mm -hmm. So um, when I come back from from Boston, back to Vancouver, I feel I was kind of like how Elizabeth started because she she started learning harp, switched from, from flute to, to harp, and then she just started, you know, playing with orchestra. <laughs> And that's almost the same for me. I came back and I started getting um, gigs for weddings. And then I, 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 joined, I joined the Vancouver Academy of Music, the, um, the orchestra for, for a, a year. And I'm, I'm, I'm loving the collaboration. So then I start taking, taking work in, with, with orchestras. Now, with younger, younger generation, I feel uh, that, that's how I started and very close to Elizabeth. With now, I think there are more, more harpists, certainly, and not a lot. I think we can count it probably like the active uh, harpists, we can probably count it with our fingers. So not, not a lot, a handful. I would say less than, probably less than 20. But we have a very good community. We are very tight needed. We have our um, West Coast Harp Society. And I, I work with many harpists, although a lot of times we do solo work, but we keep connecting. And then, you know, when, when we, are, we come up with something, we talk about it with each other. And I feel we just have a very good support group. And that's something I've heard a lot about the harp community is that the harpists are very helpful and supportive of each other. It is. You know, learning harp, I think, makes one humble. It does. It's a very difficult instrument. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you mm, appreciate, appreciate when you have the opportunity. And also, uh, we are not alone. You know, sometimes, you know, moving harp is tricky. When I, when, when I first learned harp, I, I thought I was just playing at home for my own enjoyment. Um, but the community, I think we lift each other up. Once we know there is something out there, we, we engage ourselves into it. So I think, I think this is what I, I see. Maybe other instruments, it is a lot of musicians out there maybe, uh, but I think for harpists, this is something uh, we, we keep a very close, close-knit community. Okay. And I love that about it. And the diversity too. We, we have more, more harpists, but I think we, we there's so many harpists that does a variety of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's just wonderful. Yeah, I think in, to some extent, when you find out that someone else is also playing the harp, there's already immediate special connection because it's not something that is super common, right? Unlike yeah. a mm -hmm. pianist or a violin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I see a, a concert where I have, oh, another harpist, I was like, oh. <laughs> I had that experience too recently when I went to the Opium and uh, watch a concert and the first thing I pay attention to was the harpist. Uh -huh. yeah. And I just yeah. immediately yeah. get drawn to the harp, which is very yes, special. Yes. Yeah. And we have a new uh, principal harpist at VSO, yeah. Alisa, and it's wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you mentioned a couple of things that I really want to take the time to unpack with you. I have the idea of talking to you about the community stuff later, but I feel like this is the right time. Let's dive into that a little bit. <laughs> Let's go. Because um, you also mentioned uh, Vancouver Academy of Music, which mm -hmm. is where my kids got uh, involved in, in Hop Ensemble. This is their second semester. And there's also an adult Hop Ensemble. Mm -hmm. I want to hear your opinion of how ensemble playing can enrich the learning uh, of a harp learner. And how can it help them in ways that perhaps they cannot get in an individual lesson with a teacher? Mm, yes. So uh, let's talk about the children ensemble first, because I, I, I get to work with your, your two lovely children and, and they, they are very dear to my heart. <laughs> it's, it's so wonderful that in, a, in an ensemble setting, as, as the director, that I get to interact with each one of them. And they are so different. Um, able to bring, bring them in a ensemble setting, what I hope is they learn something they cannot learn in the private teaching. Mm -hmm. In the private teaching, like, like any other instrument, it's one-on-one. -on -one. We teach um, technique, 
we teach pieces, repertoire, some of us may take exam, right? In an ensemble, those are, those are not, not the focus. The focus is play with each other and play well. Listen to each other and how we can make ourselves beautiful. That one, if we play by ourselves, we can't do it. So for example, um, now this is the second uh, semester I, I started the, the ensemble. And I'm trying something different. What I'm trying is we, we play two pieces. One piece is kind of like a duet. So um, we, we play a theme song from Spirited Away. And what I did in the arrangement is I have two parts that alternate. They take turns playing the melody and harmony. So they know what role they are. And then when they are at the melody role, they need to shine and have their phrasing. When they are in the harmony role, they need to support, keep the count. So I think this is very important for them to, to just have that exposure and see this is possible. And I, I think this is what I, I like them to, to take away with and just play with each other. Having that team building experience is almost like a sport. It is, it certainly is. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's my goal for the, for the children's ensemble. Uh, for the adult ensemble, it's a little bit different because we are all similar age. Um, I, I am just being there to, to guide and support and, and just to discover what, what, we, what we like to do. Uh, with the adult ensemble, I'm trying something fun too. We are learning canon in D, uh, which is on a lot of Harper's uh, to, to-do list. But what we are trying to do is also the same thing, alternate the melody and harmony. And I'm also trying to see if um, we can improvise. I think that would be a fun thing for, for adults to do because a lot of the times when we are doing um, learning, self-learning ourselves, we, we try to follow the notes on the music. But music, how it started, it's, if we look, at, look back in history, a lot of them is just you make up the music and play. A lot of uh, Baroque music involves improvisation. A lot of modern music, it's improvisation. So, so I, I think to take it out of that setting, I, I'm, I'm hoping the adult can, can learn, learn that as well. And what I notice about going to the ensemble, and despite my kids grumbling about having to practice, they want to go back. I think part of it is because they can see other people who are doing similar things as themselves. Mm. So you don't feel as lonely uh, mm. as, you know, just learning the instrument on your own. I think mm. there's something about belonging to a community. Belonging that, to a group. I am part of that team and motivating each other. Yeah. Because with, um, with the children's ensemble, actually, it's, I, the, the youngest one is probably six years old. And the oldest is 15. So it's a wide, uh, uh, wide range of uh, levels, uh, age. And everybody bring different things to, on, to, the, to the team. And I think everybody has something to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so with younger hoppers, they can hear what the more advanced student is like and be motivated and do better. I, I think that's a, that's a great, great thing to, to do. And for older harpists, um, they, they learn how to support, how to bring everybody that sound good together. Mm-hmm. It's like part of a puzzle, putting puzzles together. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And the aso- adult ensemble did fairly well last time, didn't they? They win a competition. Yes, they did. Oh, I'm so proud of them. <laughs> um, we did, um, it was a spring semester. We work hard for three months. Uh, Adult does have a very busy life. So uh, we only only met three times. And we did three pieces. We submitted one piece for uh, the Infinity International Heart Competition and we won second place. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm super proud. Yeah, Yeah. they're they're very happy too. (laughs) I think one of the adult students said, oh, I never never won anything. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) 
<laughs> it is awesome, and there's yeah. I can see that the ensemble has grown in the children one anyway, because I was there in the last semester, and the amount of people that are signing up has has really grew. So for those who are in the area, if you have a kid, or even if you're an adult playing the harp, I encourage you to check out the Vancouver Academy of Music uh, harp program, the ensemble playing programs. I will put some links in the description yeah. for those who are in the area to check it mm -hmm. out. Now, on the note of community building, you are also involved with the American Harp Society. You are on their executive committee. Mm -hmm. And I understand that there are different chapters, which uh, I belong to the, the West Coast Harp Society chapter. Tell us about the work that you do with the Harp Society and why would we want to take part in it uh, and become a member and what are some of the things that are happening uh, locally, if you're able to tell us any? Yes, of course, definitely. <laughs> yes, so I am part of the American Harp Society. Um, they, they are the whole America, so North America, South America, and of course that include Canada. When I first heard about it, it was actually when I first started Pedal Harp, and I need to take, take it out for a gig, and then I need to buy insurance, and somebody, you have to join the American Harp Society because you get this count. So that's how I started. <laughs> and I think that's a lot of, a lot of our, how other harpists started joining them too. And then you slowly discover there are good things. <laughs> there are wonderful things. It is, um, it is a very big society. Um, I think with a few thousand members. Um, there are two, um, they, they host annual events. One national conference where there are workshop, concert uh, that you, you go to, to learn and enjoy. The other, the other one, they, and they take, do, do an alternate year. Um, it's a national competition um, where it is for uh, young hapas who would like to explore a more professional career, or, or also if you, if you like to expand your, your harp learning by seeing what other people do, and they are growing uh, that uh, the competition as well. I think this year they're going to have a young composer project as part of the learning activity. So it's not so much competition driven. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm I'm involved with that too uh, because I I enjoy working with young hafiz and, and and youth. So last year last year they invited me to join the board of director. So I get to know the people a little bit more and um, help out with their membership. This year, I'm invited to be there um, on their executive board. And I am very honored to be their uh, second vice president. Um, I am involved with both uh, the Young Composer Project. I'll be teaching, I'll be hosting some workshop where we teach uh, how to write music using software. Mm -hmm. And I'm also involved in uh, having a youth podcast. So I, I might need to ask, ask for some <laughs> guidance. <laughs> no, and we can collaborate. <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to, um, and, and you know, one of the, the key things, the key goal that they have, a vision, is to empower the next generation of harpist. So, and I, and I think it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, with the local chapter, we have a West Coast Harp Society, which is the, the West Coast chapter of the American Harp Society. Um, it, it is a local harpist uh, group where we host uh, an annual event, Harp Day, and also throughout the year, there are different events uh, hosted by different harp teacher. Uh, for example, we, we would play music. Uh, we might talk about techniques, um, heart maintenance, um, on, and even technology and about gigging, because it's not just about learning, it's also about uh, professional learning from each other. So that's a, that's a really good resource if uh, people in, in, in Vancouver is looking for something local and also something uh, in, in, the, in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, notice that there are quite a lot of events that can be assessed uh, online, so you don't necessarily have to physically be uh, here mm. to participate. I know some harpists are in the island, for example, that belongs to the yes. society as well, so that's very yes, handy. Exactly, yeah. I think with uh, 
with the past two years where we are, a lot of us are stuck at home, we, we, we learn to be not more tech savvy. Yes. <laughs> and that's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, talking about nurturing the next generation, you are um, teaching HARP now. Mm-hmm. Tell us about starting to learn the harp. Now, I remember when we first got a harp in the house is because I wanted my kid to start learning an instrument and my daughter decided that harp would be it because we took her to a recital. She saw a couple instruments and she thought the harp resonated with her the best. And I remember how overwhelming it was because, again, it's not a very popular instrument. It's not like we can walk into a music store and have people tell us all about it. Finding a teacher can be challenging. What are some of your thoughts on getting young children started on the harp? Um, what are your personal experience and what are some of your pointers for parents who want to get their kids involved in harp playing? Mm. For for young students, it, it, it is an instrument that I think the, the young student would, would learn together with the family. <laughs> because one of the first lessons I teach is how to tune. Right. And... And I'm almost teaching the, the parent how to tune because mm. uh, tuning is a little bit tricky, as, as you know, too. It's very fine, uh, fine tuning to get to the right pitch. Uh, so the and I think it's a great activity for, for parents and, and, and the student because I would have, you know, the t- parent, I'll teach you how to tune. But the student, you get to tell the parent, are, is, are we at the right pitch? how to use uh, the, the tuna. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's, a, it's a very involved instrument, I would say. And I, I do encourage the, the parent to help out uh, in, in tuning. And later on, the, the kids can pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, so tuning is very important because that is also part of our, our EU training. Mm-hmm. Um, later on, we of course, we tune with our app. But later on, we, we, we can learn how to do, uh, yeah, tuning by, by, by ear. Uh, with young harpists, I think the, the other, um, I think it's, I don't think this is a challenge. What I would say is, you know, harp is so visual and it's just so pleasing. It is. <laughs> you, you, you play something and it's just, just so good. <laughs> you Nothing can go wrong <laughs> with hard playing. So um, one of the, the first few lessons I, I usually work with the young harpists is how do you make sound? You can make sound with the string, of course, but there are more to it. And then just have fun with it. Then, then you get to be close, have a close connection with your instrument. And then as you, as you learn your technique, you can take back and see why am I connected to this instrument? And then it might just take you to, to places that you, you never know. I really resonated with what you said about it being a family activity because that's how I got involved in playing the harp. <laughs> I, I, can, I played the piano when I was young and I can read music. So I thought, you know, at the minimum, I can help my kid how to read music. But then, of course, she couldn't tune when she was five or six, what have you. So I end up taking a lesson or two with my kid's lesson and set in a couple and, and learn. And there's a part of me that wonders how many adult harp players happen to have kids that are also <laughs> learning the harm. You are one of the few. Yeah. 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 With young students, and maybe this is a good tip for parents too, I have had, um, you know, with piano, we can start probably at three years old mm-hmm. because you just have to hit the keys. Right. And then you can make sound. Um, what I realize is with hard playing is you have to be able to control this knuckle. Mm. So what I usually suggest is as the kids are, are, are growing up into the age where, where the parent would start thinking about instrument, um, this would be a good sign. If, if you feel their hands are, are still working, they are still growing their, their, their muscle and control, um, if we're learning harp, then then it's you know just make music, but not so much of the technique. But once they have the more fine skill of controlling this action, then we can start building more techniques over it. And usually it is around I would say four and five. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So um, something for the parents to consider. If their kids are not ready, there are there are actually lots of um, lots of activity for not not just harp, but they can you know make music. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of uh, early childhood music program I think in the Vancouver area too. Yeah. And I I feel that the making sound and and realizing you can do that is almost a bigger lesson than going yeah, in with the finer detail, <laughs> right? Yeah, it can be a guitar. Yeah. yeah, and then some kids they 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 would even just echo. Oh, that's so much fun! <laughs> yeah, um, I think it was last year. Last year we had a Halloween concert that we're making music that that makes scary music, and the kids love it. <laughs> oh, I, my son would find that very fun. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and how differently would an adult uh, start uh, the harp compared to a kid? Um, I notice a lot of adult wants to play songs like right out of the gate which might not be very realistic um what are some of the foundational skills that you think an adult uh, music learner especially one that maybe have no prior music experience uh should have bef- to to get that strong start mm. i i usually approach adult quite differently than children um when adult ad- approach me they are already very keen yeah. And usually they have their goals set. Like you say, I want to play that song. Yeah. <laughs> say I want to play canon. <laughs> yeah. Then, then we start to ask, hey, do you have music experience? Do you have piano experience? That usually is an asset because uh, piano, it helps with theory and not reading. So I usually try to, to, to see where, where they are. Mm-hmm. And if they are already knowing about uh, you know, how to uh, read music, then, then we can start with sheet music. Then we're working on the mechanism and, and the technique. If there are also adults who say, hey, I, I always wanted to learn harp. I never learned any music instrument. And I have, a, I have an adult student who is very dear to me. Her name is Mandy. She, she came to me after like, her kids are, are almost in college. And she said, my birthday, my husband uh, gave me a 26 string harp. Now I want to learn. That's so sweet. <laughs> so I, I think it's so sweet. But she has no musical background at all. Uh, so, so we work hard. And that's also, you know, where, where I can help is, you know, in, in, in music, a lot of the times is you, you, read, you, you play the melody and, and then you build a point, the harmony. So uh, I might teach lead sheet because that's a very simplified version of the sheet music. So, so I think uh, that's that's great for adults who, who who start. They can just learn treble treble clef and then know the letters, and then they can play a tune in in probably two lessons. I would say that would that would really help the adult feel that they're making progress. <laughs> yes, and and not like oh we have to do this warm up and then you have to follow this. Yeah, so I think with with adult it's uh, more flexible, mm-hmm. but with adult it's also um, have to always check whether they are compensating because you you spend time uh, with a variety of things. So at some point, you need to go back and check, hey, is the technique correct? Why am I sounding like that? Can I make a better sound? And sometimes they don't realize when they first started, they are making that sound, <laughs> but they are making music. So that, that keeps them motivated to keep going. And at some point, you do a check, hey, can I, what can I do to, to be better? Maybe I need to refine on this, this technique. Maybe now I can have another song uh, that with this in mind. So I, I think with adult is keep setting re- reasonable and attainable goals. That's great. And you mentioned about Lee Sheed and um, teaching your student to arrange and sort of harmonize with the music. And arranging music is something you enjoy doing as well. And also composing. Tell mm-hmm. us about your music style and what kind of music do you enjoy writing? I, my, my, my music training and my music experience all comes from the jobs that come across me. So, for example, with arranging, um, it's I play a lot of weddings, the last probably 10 years. And with weddings, uh, the bride might say, hey, I want this, this, this. Mm-hmm. But I want it certain way. 
I want to walk down the aisle with this, but I want you to play something magical in the beginning and I walk down the aisle. So, so that's kind of how I started with arranging. And also a lot of the pieces uh, that they request may or may not be, uh, I may not be able to find the hard music for it. So that's how I started, getting to know what uh, this music is for and then write a style that uh, fits, fits the, uh, the, the wedding or the event or the need. That's how I started. Then as I start teaching, uh, some students, like adults, they might want a piece of music that is from a, a movie. There might not be any sheet music available or maybe a piano score. Then I need to simplify a lot to um, or, or arrange it in a way that is uh, capture what they want and also have some uh, heart qualities to it. So, so that's how I, I, I started with uh, arranging music. Composing music is a different story. <laughs> I, started, um, I started working with uh, Edward Top from the Vancouver Academy of Music. After I came back from, from Boston, uh, occasionally I'm invited to his orchestration class to demonstrate harp for his student to write. So, um, and then I was involved with a couple of uh, concerts where her stu his student put together. So I get to see, oh, how, how people compose and how they should compose. <laughs> so, so that was a very collaborative uh, and environment as well. And I work with a few composers as well that we, they, they give me music and then I find, hey, how, how do we make it make your music better? So that's kind of how I, I, I started. And then with, uh, with my, my, my students too, I need to find ways to keep them engaged. <laughs> and kids are very creative, just like drawing. So when we compose, that's how they put their creativeness to it. They're making something of their own. Like if they're drawing on a piece of paper, they're making harp music. They're making a song. So that's how I started my, my, my composing. Um, I can share some uh, past project we have with the, with the kids. Uh, for example, we did a project where it is kind of like a harp music story book called uh, Rob and June Adventure, where we had a few episodes of uh, the brother and sister Rob and June <laughs> and what they do they rescue animals in the rainforest and they save animals in the sea <laughs> and that was an idea that came up with by my by my young student she was eight years old at that time and now she's 10 years old yeah and um, we also did like the Halloween concert we we talk about they make scary spooky music and I help them <laughs> That is so fun. And yeah. I can imagine how, you know, as a, a little person to be able to create something that must also bring them a lot of joy and happiness. Yes, yes. And very proud too. Yeah. And, it's, and when I they, it's, yes. I think it's a great way to, to also tie together sort of their own personality into their instrument, right? Like yes. almost making it their own. Yes, and it gives a satisfaction when, so the last last project we had was, uh, we opened a restaurant called Happylicious, and each student composed a piece of their favorite food. Oh, I think I remember sewing a scramble egg rice <laughs> scramble situation. Egg. Yes, <laughs> to uh, one of my student, Alice, she make um, fried rice with scramble egg, and know. she she basically outlined her cooking process or her mom's <laughs> cooking awesome. process from cracking an egg <laughs> to scramble it on the heart. Oh, that was so much fun. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and it gives another level of satisfaction when they, they're able to put it on the paper. So with composing, um, <clears throat> I, I don't have formal training on composing, I have to say, um, but I draw on how, what drawn the kids to. For example, if they enjoy drawing, I would say, draw the notes. If you want to talk about glisses, just, just draw it out. You don't have to write the notes. If you want the pattern, just draw it out what you see in your head or color. Um, and then slowly you add the notes to it. And, and when they're able to put it, just like how they are following um, their, their repertoire, it gives a level of satisfaction. Yeah. That's very fun. <laughs> yes. yeah, and it gives gives me a good reminder of the importance of learning some good music theory. 
having that foundation to allow you to build on that. And yes, that yes. So it's cool. also to tie in, tie back in, hey, yes, you can make music, draw your music, but there's also structure because you want other people to enjoy. You play something you enjoy and also other people enjoy. And that's where the music theory comes in, is we have a common language where if you do certain things, Ah, that is that is what makes music music. Absolutely, yeah, that's great. I remember in last uh, year, I would say uh, it's around Christmas time when the West Coast Harp Society had an online gathering. You were on the road. Uh, going to orchestra actually when you were giving us a little bit of a demo on a Christmas piece and I find out that you do and you mentioned that already that you do some work with orchestras Hmm, uh, which I imagine is quite different than going solo in a wedding gig tell us about working with an orchestra Uh, what are some of the challenges of being uh, an orchestral um, harpist and what are some of the good memories and and great experience that you have taken away from being a part of an orchestra so far Mm -hmm. I I love working with orchestra Um, and it was something that after I I had exposure and at a conservatory that I I know how you know, you can make better music by playing with other people, ensemble, orchestra. So once I, after I come back, I start exposing, you know, trying to look up things, learning opportunity, and slowly learning opportunity becomes gigging opportunity. <laughs> and I have to thank my, my teacher, Elizabeth, for, for, for that too, is she started referring me to, to orchestra. <laughs> And that was a wonderful experience. You, some of the m- most memorable uh, ones is, for example, I work with uh, the Okanagan Symphony Orchestra. So you take your harp, put it, <laughs> and then you, you drive. And then what they do is you play in Kelowna, and then you also, the, they, they do six or seven shows. So you receive your music, you, you practice by yourself, you practice with you too, and then you you go to rehearsal, maybe once or twice. And then you, you play, say, three cities, Kelowna, Vernon, Penticton. And it's, it's really cool to, to play something, go to another city and, 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 and play it because you then know your repertoire really well by then. It was really fun one time when I was driving the Coquihalla Highway <laughs> by myself. <clears throat> and it was middle of winter. I remember it was February. Wow. It was February. While I was driving, it was like ice falling behind me. Oh, dear. I felt like I was in a movie. So I was driving, driving, and then I was I was so tired when I get to town. And I didn't realize it was Valentine's Day. I went to the restaurant. I, I just want something. <laughs> and then I looked like a mad woman. And then they were looking at me. You know, people are having, and <clears throat> having, having their dinner. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> You're so focused on getting there safe. <laughs> you just yeah. want to eat. <laughs> I just want to eat. Um, so so there was it was just really fun. The whole process was really fun. Working with the orchestra too, I remember that time it was a South American theme. And I play Huapango uh, with, with the orchestra. And it was, I was right beside the percussionist. And it was just so awesome. <laughs> I got lost and I came, I, I came back and had a really great, great concert. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you find it challenging to have to learn new pieces like, in <laughs> relatively short time, right? Yes. Yes. Well, that's where, that's where your, all your learning come, comes as your toolbox. Hmm. Uh, with, with, with learning, you, you, you know what you're missing. So this is where I'm a little bit different too. Uh, I just kind of plunge myself in whenever they, they, they need something. Oh, then I, 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 I learn. I usually get about one to two weeks. Wow. That's yep. not a lot of time. That's not a lot. And sometimes it's a full program. Could be a one, one hour. Mm-hmm. Some, some are okay. Some you kind of sit for 30 minutes and then you play. But some are quite intensive. And you never know when they sign, when they say, hey, are you free for this date? You have no idea <laughs> what you sign up for. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the cool part. I always want to stay active. And, and these are things I continue to learn because I know I, I don't have the, the, the usual path of becoming a professional musician. So I use these opportunity to find, you know, where, where are, what are the new tools I need for my toolbox? And then I, I, I built a point. So, so it's, it's so, it's so good. And uh, to be able to be part of the team. So back to just like ensemble. But in a professional setting, you come prepared and then you play and you make better music. It's all uh, part of team. Uh, it's like building uh, a team and make music that is greater than yourself. I can appreciate why Elizabeth said you had to get creative sometime with playing in an orchestra and the really oh. troubleshoot. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes if you're playing with new music, you the, the composer may not play, play hard may not know no harp so you do have to you know try to be in their head know what they want and then adapt to it mm -hmm. i try to play every note but when it's not possible what do you do you 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 still have to know uh play that structure so knowing the composer maybe just talk to him too <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that helps and and with with the short time frame you you're correct too it's to be flexible how much you can learn while you prepare and how much you still need to do at, at the rehearsal. And then after the rehearsal, you might still need to work on. And when you're playing at the concert, if something happened, don't panic. It's okay. <laughs> Keep at it. <laughs> it, gives you a, it gives you a really different skill set. Uh, Very different. Working yeah. In an yeah. Uh, problem solving. I think I think that's one of the thing about about it is it's solving problem on the fly. Yeah. And and you know at the end you're making music you're making people happy. If if I have this mindset then I know when I get on the stage this is what I do. And I'm always. Uh in awe when I hear a bunch of people playing on the stage knowing that they didn't actually spend a whole ton of time practicing it as a big group and they can still manage to pull it off and it, it's a really a magical thing to witness yes. as an audience and yes. I can imagine how much of a, um, <laughs> a high it can be for some of the musicians to be able to say yes I did it <laughs> I'll tell you the concert I did uh, on Friday it was a Persian concert, uh, Persian music. Um, <clears throat> I received half of the music a few weeks ahead, and then the other half kind of a week ahead. And then an MP3, an MP3 that is uh, generated to, to, by software to, for me to see how it sounds like. The concert was Friday, one rehearsal on Thursday. And then that's when I met the musician and that's when, oh, this is how, how it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> and it was, and because it was Persian music, it was uh, it was very cool rhythm. It has seven, eight, five, eight, ten, eight. And 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 to count and to 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 work with their rhythm, it's it's very fun, also quite scary. And and we pulled it off. <laughs> we pulled it off, and like you say, it's such a high. <laughs> So much adrenaline. And then and then you, you see the audience, the audience, how they engage. And I think that kind of motivate uh, or energize me at the moment to 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 play better <laughs> or at least keep in time. Absolutely. That was so much fun. Yeah. So so th these are things that um I, I, I love with playing with groups and and get to also expand. Expand myself as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, something a little bit less hectic. Let's talk about <laughs> therapy, uh, therapeutic music, because you're mm. also a certified therapeutic musician. Mm. What is that work like? And what drawn you into uh, learning to be a therapeutic musician? This is something I, I, I have to say I, is dear to my heart, um, but I haven't done that for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I, I do wish to, to, to go back to it at some point, but I'll share with you my journey for that. So it was when I was in Boston, in, in, in the couple of years I was in Boston, I was looking for things to do beyond the learning. And I, where I live is just a few steps away from the Massachusetts General Hospital. So I walked there and then I saw a poster, <laughs> a poster 
about, oh, uh, needing a musician. So I approached them. And I, the Lori, Lori Kupasek, she is music therapy, music therapy at the, music therapist at the hospital. She introduced me to the wards and showed me how it's like. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. How can I get started? Then she connected me with uh, Cynthia uh, Price Glenn from Boston Conservatory and also Boston Ballet. And they enrolled me with uh, the certificate program. And I learned so much from it. And the hospital also has a very good program for therapeutic musician to play. I go there, I think once a week, once a week where I rotate between different wards. Uh, for example, the intensive care unit, the emergency ward, the pediatric ward, the transplant unit, and also the pediatric intensive care unit. And it, it was a very intensive experience, actually, because you bring in with the heart. In the hospital environment, you actually have a lot of machines going on, and you don't want to be in doctor's way because they they are doing their job uh, at, the, at, at the moment. And I would play a set. You, you play the set, but there's a way to begin your, your set to introduce your music because you can't just play music right, right, right there, right? You slowly introduce your music. So you let the music drift in the ward and then you start, you know, feeling what, what's the vibe? What do you want to do? Do you want to calm people down? Or you just want to, hey, maybe add something to it. So you kind of feel feel the the um, feel the room at the moment, um, and then do your set, and then you kind of wrap up, slowly settle down, and then let the walk be back to back to where where they the where it was because I usually play about thirty minutes. Yeah, some of the things that are very. Um, that, that I, I still remember, of course, it was a while back, um, was in the pediatric ward. I, I was beside a, a little, 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 I think, infant. And then he was having all these uh, apparatus on him. And he was breathing quite heavily because he's probably, they, he need assistance with, with breathing. And then I, I had no idea what to do because he was so close to me. <laughs> Because the harp would be very loud. Um, and I forgot to mention, we, we don't bring the concert harp. We bring a smaller version of the lever harp. And some, some uh, musician, if they are play harp, they might bring a lap harp. For me, it was a 32 string uh, harp that I, I, I bring. So uh, for the infant, I start playing just, just one note at a time. And and with all the beeping going on, I was kind of improvising with the beeping. <laughs> and then slowly, you know, there are some, some, some rhythm to it. And then you, you, you kind of feel the, the baby's breath kind of settle down and calms down. And, and for me, that was just, that just hits me, uh, what, what I could do. Um, and what music can 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 do for for a patient. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, that's very uh, special. And what a coincidence! Because my last guest, uh, Mark Hammer, also did something similar where he played the harp in a neonatal uh, uh, unit, and he was noticing the positive impact of the music on the infant, which I think mm -hmm. is fantastic. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what I'm hearing from your journey is that you're using your music, be it, you know, in your therapeutic music practice or in the orchestra or even in your teaching, you're servicing other people and sharing your passion with them and connecting with them and them to their music, which I think it's a beautiful thing yeah. uh, to do. Um, cause that's I, what I, I try. That's what I try to do. Um, what I also notice, like, as you, as you say, I'm servicing, using my music to service people. Yeah. Um, a lot of young like students I work with, they're scared of playing music. And I think it's about mindset too. Mm -hmm. If you worry about people judging your music, of course you'll be scared. But if you change your mindset a little bit, you are playing music to uh, make, make, make people happy. Then, then that change how you, you play 
in in turn, and you won't feel that scare scariness or nervousness anymore. It will change into a different energy. Mm-hmm. Just want to say that. <laughs> yeah, and I resonate yeah. with that a lot because I, as a parent, I always wonder, you know, to what extent should I be uh, pressing my kids, for example, right, to to do well in music? And I think fairly early on, I come to the realization that, you know, taking exams or doing well at it is one of the possible outcome. But another possible outcome, which I prefer, is that they learn to enjoy music and use it as a vehicle to express themselves. And yes. and I really appreciate uh, teachers and uh, instructors who are helping that happens in other mm. people um mm. i see that uh, my kids when I, when they go to uh, ensemble that yes it, it is there's still a responsibility but it's yeah. also the enjoyment that yeah. they're experiencing the fact that they want to go back despite <laughs> having to practice pretty hard i think it's they know a, they like it <laughs> right i think it's a testament of you know feeling yeah. that community uh-huh. and and sharing that passion and joy together mm. right and, and you know in an ensemble playing Yes, it's a little bit scary, but it is a very safe environment, mm-hmm. right? Um, as professional musician, if you don't do well, you <laughs> you have to do well because you get paid, right? You have to do well, and you know some are ticketed event. You have to you you have to bring bring your game to <laughs> to that. But you know, with ensemble, you get to experience in your own comfort zone. Mm-hmm. but still have a goal that, hey, this is what I need to work towards. I do have to work hard to do it, but I can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice because I think uh, in a world where we can get pretty competitive, I think sometimes it's nice to take a step back to sort yes. of look at the things that we're doing and what we enjoy about it. And yes. I think that that takeaway yes. hopefully is going to have a longer term impact in yes. the kids. It's always a balance. Want, right? Yeah. It's always a balance, I think. Um, sometimes we do want to train uh, to be better musician. And the exam competition are, are some of some of some of the option, uh, some of the ways, mm-hmm. but it is just a way. It's not for like, if you win, it's okay. <laughs> but maybe it's the, you know, the feedback, the experience from it that matter, matters more. Mm-hmm. And about balance is, you know, sometimes, yes, you want to do this. Sometimes you want to take a step back. Do I want to do this again? Or maybe, you know, in next year. <laughs> Yeah. And then maybe try, you know, do crazy, crazy things on the harp once in a while. It's okay too. Yeah. And everyone's learning journey is so different too, right? Every kid oh, is so different. different. Even adults, we are all different when it comes yeah. to our own music journey. Yeah. So I think I, it's great to have different uh, hmm. options, right? Yes. Oh, I think every every one of us, we our journey is different. How we walk is different. Um, it's to always re- reassess. Think about does it still uh, it still works for me? What can I do next? Do I do the same thing next? Do I do something different? Um, I think it's to ask and and with with kids, it's a family affair. <laughs> yeah, it really is. We set goals together, and then we talk about it, and then we we debrief and talk about what we learn, and it's very much a personal goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought it might be a nice way to end this conversation by asking you about sort of some of your thoughts for uh, our commu- hub community here in Vancouver with your involvement with uh, VAM and the ensemble. Where would you like the hub community in Vancouver to be a couple years from now and how can we all contribute towards it? Oh, that is such a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. I think uh, the community is always evolving. Now it's about building the connection. I think for the past few years, we, we have been working our- ourselves. A lot of us have been working ourselves. With the academy, it gives me the opportunity to bring people out of their home and connect. And I think this will open doors. This will open doors. With the uh, West Coast Harp Society, we're doing the same thing too. Um, but because we we have the whole West Coast uh, harpists, we wish to connect. 
then a lot of the activities are, are online. I feel if there are a group of people who are interested, certainly we can make things happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can, we can be creative and make our own opportunity. And I think the society is, is, is here to facilitate that. Yeah, that would be wonderful. And I'm certainly uh, feeling the, the growth in the ensemble program in VEM is a good sign that people do want to come together and yeah. participate in uh, a HARP community. So hopefully we'll see more of that happening. I hope so too, yeah. yeah. And maybe and not know. just uh, in the greater Vancouver too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. part of it, our geography is challenging, isn't it? Uh, our province is so spread out. <laughs> our province is very spread out and we we have to travel. Mm-hmm. So um, Vancouver is a great central location, um, but I'm sure there are also other hapas that are not in the greater Vancouver region. And it would be lovely to, to be able to play together. Yeah. yeah, and I definitely think the West Coast Hub Society is a great uh, starting point for meeting other people mm, in the area. Definitely. Or maybe you discover people in your area that you didn't even know exist. So Definitely. So besides Vancouver, uh, Marilyn is located in Nanaimo, mm-hmm. and she has a community there too. And Allison is in Whistler, Squamish. So yeah. yeah. We have we, we do have good communities there, and and I hope the society here is for people to able to discover that there are there are communities out there. Yeah, mm, that's great. Thank you so much for talking to me. I really uh, enjoy getting to know you through the work of my kids uh, Hop Ensemble and also in this conversation. And I look forward to uh, continuing to participate in our local Hop community together. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria, for having me. It was it was my pleasure to be able to join your your, your podcast and to share share my passion of love of the with for the heart and also with uh, my service to the community. That's wonderful. Okay, take care. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye.